This video is sponsored by Factor. <laughs> Director M. Night Shyamalan is considered by some a genius, and by others, not so much. Early on in his career, many thought he was the second coming of Steven Spielberg and Alfred Hitchcock, but a string of expensive flops at the box office set those expectations back a bit for many, including his sometimes repetitive and heavy-handed script writing, which he was also chided for in this adaptation of the book The Cabin at the End of the World that would become the film Knock at the Cabin, which did not score all that well with critics or audiences. But the thing that M. Night Shyamalan is really considered a genius for is his work with composition, his artistic eye behind the camera, and his making the viewer acutely aware of camera movements that play into the overall story. And in Knock at the Cabin, what really keeps the movie from totally flopping in my opinion is the incredible camera work employed to make you uncomfortable right from the start. So let's take a look at how he achieved this with two DPs, unnerving close-up shots, and old barely functioning film cameras, supposedly. I don't know about you, but whenever we get into those deep video projects or any editing project for that matter, you never want anything to break your concentration or that creative flow. But sometimes it means sacrificing on things like cooking healthy meals for yourself when you're really slammed. Well, that's where today's sponsor Factor steps in to help constantly busy with inconsistent schedule creators like you and me with a rotating chef prepared, dietitian approved 27 plus meals to choose from that take the guesswork out of eating healthy. And the great part is it's ready to eat in two minutes with no prep or cleanup necessary. They also have 33 plus add-ons like smoothies, keto, shakes, desserts, and more so you can get back to editing and not break that creative flow. It's awesome to have an option like this available when the last thing we're usually thinking about is being healthy. So if you're interested in trying out Factor, use my link or go to go.factor75.com and use the code FACTOR SE33283 for 50% off your first box. As we always do right off the bat for these videos, let's take a look at the camera and lens choices for this movie, as many times it helps to inform intent with specific tools being used. For Knock at the Cabin, it's slightly confusing what film cameras were used at different points throughout the movie, because there are a few different film cameras that are credited. Shyamalan explained in an interview in Empire Magazine that he is drawn to older ways of telling stories, and he has stuck to that using film cameras throughout most of his career. And with Knock at the Cabin, he continued on with that trend. For the film, they used an Aeriflex 235, a Panavision Panaflex Lightweight 2, and a Panavision Panaflex Millennium XL2. He also credits using an even older camera for flashback scenes that were, as he said, barely functional, and at certain focal lengths, shots would become out of focus. All of those imperfections are just part of it is what he said. We're not entirely sure which older cameras he's using or referring to in this interview, as the credited cameras were only released as far back as the 90s. The Aeriflex 235 was released in 2003, the Panavision Panaflex Lightweight 2 was released in 1993, and the Panavision Panaflex Millennium XL2 was released in 2004. In a lot of the behind the scenes footage, we mostly see what appears to be the two Panavision cameras being used as the primary cameras, and the Aeriflex 235 being used for specialty shots and primarily using Panavision Primo lenses. They utilized two different types of film stock for this movie, Kodak Vision 3 250D 5207 and Vision 3 500T 5219, both of which have been used in past Shyamalan movies, including Old, and are fairly popular being used across a variety of well-known films. It would seem Vision 500T 5219, which was released in 2012, was used for interiors based on its high rating for day interiors and limited lighting. As Codex says on their website, it has a wide exposure latitude with exceptional highlight control for working in a variety of lighting conditions, ranging from high contrast outdoor lighting to mixed interior light situations, which fits really well with the naturalistic approach to filming the interiors for this movie that the deep took. We will discuss that aspect here a little later on in the video. The Kodak Vision 3 250D 5207 released by Kodak in 2011 was probably used for exterior shots. It's been used in films like Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, There Will Be Blood, and the series Breaking Bad. Kodak bills it as a daylight balanced movie film characterized by a fine grain structure, broad dynamic range, and exceptional highlight control. It uses an acetate safety base or remjet coating that basically aids in absorbing highlights and resolving the halation in the image. This fits well in a daylight scenario with lots of shadows and highlights, which is where we begin the movie, and it's the first scene I want to take a look at, which really sets the tone for the entire movie. 
Here at the beginning of the film, we are greeted with a this beautiful scene in a lush green forest and meet the first character of the movie, a young girl by herself collecting bugs outside of a cabin. Eventually, we see a man walking in through the forest towards her. And eventually, as he moves towards her, the camera shows off his imposing large character from the perspective of this little girl, basically showing him towering over her. Already off to a creepy start to this movie, he gets down on her level and continues to have a conversation with her. Something interesting happens here during the next few minutes as the unnerving conversation continues. The camera switches between the close-ups of both characters' faces as they continue to talk, and over the next few minutes, the cameras begin to slowly tilt and ease in until pretty much only their faces are filling up the entire screen, almost tilting the world's axis on its side. I think it's the almost perfect way to start this film. You immediately get pulled in from the start with how uncomfortable the choice in framing makes you feel. And that was really the goal that Shyamalan was going for here. He told Collider in an interview that if there's a specific thing that I'm feeling, I tend to do it closer. I'm trying to ascertain whether you're crazy or if you're going to hurt me right now. I'm in a hyper close up with you. I'm watching your facial expressions. I don't really care about your legs. And so the movie starts with a gunshot. It starts immediately with a stranger showing up. And so there's a lot of close ups because they're at a nine from almost go. You're with your daughter and strangers break into your house. You're at a nine and you need to get out of there. And a nine is exactly where you start with this movie. To achieve this, Shyamalan used two directors of photography because some conflicts of schedule. Lowell Meyer, who is probably most known for working with Shyamalan on the Apple series Servant, which has a lot of the horror and suspense elements we see in some of these exterior scenes in the movie, which is what he handled. For interior scenes, which would be about 75% of the movie that takes place in one cabin and pretty much in one room in that cabin, he brought in Jaron Blotchke, who is probably best known for the Lighthouse collaboration with Robert Eggers, but has also worked on The Northman and The Witch with Eggers as well. The Lighthouse is an excellent film, which I'm sure all of you know, that takes place in one location and has to balance a 1.19 by one aspect ratio that is almost perfectly square. So again, a great pick for filming a movie that would take place in one room. This time he would just, you know, have some extra room in the aspect ratio to work with. Shyamalan said this about working with Jaren on interiors for this movie. Jaren is just a very special mind, the way he thinks about the lighting. And I mean, it's a very complex way we shot the cabin. There are no lights inside, so we didn't use any lights there were no bounces, nothing. It's just coming from the windows and the doors. And so it is a very naturalistic way to shoot on a stage. And it creates a very beautiful, difficult to expose to, difficult all of that stuff to work around. Because if you move a little bit like this, then you see all the lights in the windows. So you have to adjust everything. It's a tedious process, but it yields something very beautiful. It also looks like it's shot on location because of that. This very naturalistic approach to filmmaking did yield some great results as it uses the limited spacing they have creatively, shifting power dynamics between the groups, showing off the changing alliances between characters and the slow wedge that's driven between specific characters as the story progresses. You physically feel these things happening regardless of what's being said in the dialogue. And I mean, that really is filmmaking, telling a story through a visual medium that you could follow along even without the dialogue. The weightiness is felt in the room throughout the film because of the composition. Shyamalan says, if you think about the language of cinema and wide shots, mid shots, and then close ups, they are different ways that the characters are interacting with their environment. So let's say I'm in a hostage situation like that and I'm thinking about escaping. I might be talking to you, but I'm thinking about how to get out. And I could do that in a wide shot because that's conveying that the character is saying, hey, it's gonna be all right. No, I'm fine, I'm fine, but I'm thinking about the windows and the doors and you see me struggling. Shyamalan has been described in the past as a starter kit director for how he really makes the everyday audience goer aware of camera movements, which for some, it's something to criticize, but for others, it's something that they commend him for. Similar to how many love and hate and well, love this other famous director we all know and hate or love. Christopher Nolan. If you like this video, you should definitely check out our video on him, black and white film, IMAX, and his upcoming Oppenheimer movie right here.